Hey guys, we are going to take a second look at Clutched Cards, which is now closed. So, you never want a small business to go belly up, but it is the reality of owning a card shop. Not the best time to start a card shop. The economy is kind of bad. Money is a little bit tight. You know, it's getting tighter as inflation goes up. And collectibles on a whole are way down from the COVID highs. Now, Clutch, uh, in case you don't remember what happened, they were going under. Uh, they spent a lot of money on F1, on uh, nice food, nice travel. Essentially, this was the flex lifestyle. Everyone, uh, including Mark's Cards, if you remember Mark's Cards, who had to file bankruptcy even though he paid his family a million dollars. Who knows, you know... I'm here for the vibes, right? Mark's cards. There are a lot of game people who spent a lot of money, some of it PPP loan money, on building up their collectibles. Uh, in fact, there was that guy in Atlanta, Georgia, who was convicted, and he, he, I believe he's still in jail, for spending all his PPP money on a Charizard. Because that's what he needed. He needed $100,000 to buy a first edition Charizard. Business reasons, of course. Now, Clutch... Cards, again, I don't know much about them in terms of people, but their Instagram profile, which has now been deleted, the website has been deleted, the Instagram has been deleted, the Facebook has been deleted, um, they flexed hard. They flexed hard. I mean, they were traveling to every convention. I mean, you probably understand what I'm going to say because it's still happening today. The flex is still happening today where these people supposedly eat really lavish meals. They stay in nice hotels. They take flights everywhere. And you're, they're barely making any money. And in fact, they made so little money that they, in the last attempt, they had a pre-order. And as you can see from the reviews and the multiple Reddit posts, they did not deliver on their pre-order. Because they ran out of money and they did not offer a refund. Essentially, they just took your money. Met a zoo style and left. Said peace. We met a zoo. We out. And that's what happened to uh, this uh, crazy, crazy story. Um, another really relevant thing that I want to point out here uh, is uh, about game stores in general. It's it's hard, guys. It is really hard to run a game store. I've looked at it, and if I if I thought a game store was operational, I would already own one right now. I would already have one operational right now, but I don't. And um, having a baby on the way, you know, there's a lot of financial things I have to deal with. My marketing agency is doing really well, by the way. So even though I make quite a bit of money, it's still not enough to own a game store because you're going to take a loss. The in, the in the previous years, the loss was split among multiple people, but they're having financial difficulty too. Owning a game store to get prices at distribution does not make a lot of sense when Amazon already has said prices at dis below distribution. I kid you not. Um, I have so much product where it's cheaper to buy the booster box from Amazon than it is to buy from me. And that's very sad. That means I had to take it out to the product, right? So back to um, what I need to really emphasize here is right now is definitely not the time. You know, it is not the time to open a game store. Not the time to run a game store. You know, and you look at how they operated. The idea of a game store is... Um, is kind of interesting. Right, that everyone's still flexing and flipping and doing all this stuff when they their margins are just not they can't even pay rent, guys. They're scamming their customers so they can pay rent. That's crazy, in my opinion. That is absolutely bonkers. And yet everyone in their grandmother is telling you how much they're flexing and they're flexing and they're flexing as if this is like twenty twenty COVID times. Um and a game store of this size, it, it's a huge game store and I don't see no people in it. You know, I mean, I, you got to get some customers, young fellas, right? And instead of like having people in it or having your shop open, they're traveling. Um, I mean, this particular store was is a very good emphasis of how small businesses fail. 
they probably made a little bit of money and they thought they were geniuses and they spent it all on travel, meals, entertainment, and then they went belly. They couldn't even deliver pre-orders. They had to delete all their social media. That's how bad it is for them. And why would you think it would be any different, right? Why would you think it would be any different? This is exactly what happens to a lot of game stores. They get over their heads and they just simply cannot make ends meet. I get it. I mean, supplies are expensive. Things are expensive. I never opened a game store thinking I could make money. I opened a game store because I had money. Right? But even then, I didn't flex. Like, it is really... When you're traveling... Just think about travel costs. Let's say he and his girlfriend and whatever. Like, they bring a team of four or five people to every convention. They pay a massive convention fee. They pay for hotels, fancy meals. It's always that fancy meal, right? I mean, just... Where's all this money coming from? The answer is it's coming from pre-orders from their customers that they don't deliver. I mean, that's a 100% profit margin, right? Why worry about 40, 30% profit margin retail when you can hit it out of the ballpark 100% of the time? Man, I, I really look at this card shop and it reminds me of like exactly why so many people fail. I think people fail because they are not in a, how can I say, they, they're ne they never set themselves up to be successful. Um, and in my opinion, that that's very sad. Um, that's very sad because there are people who are injured from this. There are people who lost money. There are people who are suffering, right? There are people who look at this and, and they pre-ordered and that was their hard-earned money. That was money that they may not have. And that's money that they could have enjoyed on other product. And now they don't have anything. They're, they are literally out of everything. And when you talk about game stores and car, it is one of the toughest businesses you can ever do. It is seriously one of the toughest businesses you can ever get yourself into simply for the fact that it's so competitive and everyone and their grandmother is flexing like crazy online. They want you to believe they are really wealthy. They want you to believe they have all this money. But in many aspects, they, they, they do not. They don't have this money and they don't have this wealth, but they want you to believe on social media so then they can use the money on Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all this stuff. And it's kind of a disgusting type of behavior, right? And then when shit hits the fan, they just delete everything. I mean... It's really bad. It is really, really bad. And more game stores are going to be like this. There's going to be a tons of game stores in this exact scenario where they bankrupt because they don't, they spend all their money on flexing. Anyway, bye guys.